Right, welcome back to the Jack Ward Football Podcast. Today it's time for my League One team of the season. Most probably the most controversial episode I'll do all year. But we've got to do it. I'll remind you now, opinions in football are opinions. There'll be many players that don't make my team that you feel have to make my team. And that's why we love football conversation. And that's why there's a comment section down below where you can give your thoughts. Who makes your team of the season? I'll be replying and responding to all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Give me your best League One team of the season's. I am probably wrong in your eyes, but it's opinion and it's my team. So we'll see what we can create. If you do enjoy the content, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. We've just hit 5,000 subscribers and that does still blow my mind. That's down to your support and it never does go unnoticed. 70% of the people that watch the podcast aren't subscribed. Please, if you haven't, hit that red button. It's free to do so. And like I said, it does never go unnoticed. Thank you very, very much. Let's begin with my goalkeeper in my League One team of the season. So in between the sticks, I've gone with James Trafford of Bolton Wanderers. He has the joint highest number of clean sheets across the campaign with 22. He's a ball-playing goalkeeper, very, very modern and fits perfectly in the way that Ian Everett wants his side to play. He's great in build-up play and a lot of the time plays as an extra defender in that back line. I think Walton and Cooper were definitely other candidates, but I think Trafford just gets the nod for me. I've gone with James Trafford as my goalkeeper in this year's team of the season. So at left back, it wasn't too much of a difficult decision. I've gone with Leif Davis of Ipswich Town. A player with that much influence on a side just has to make my team of the season. 17 goal contributions from left back, the modern day fullback doing that type of work in an attacking phase in third division of English football is just pretty insane. 11 chances created, 3.1 key passes per 90, just emphasises how good he is going forward. He's part of the defence in the league, which has the least number of goals conceded at 33, suggesting he might be good going forward but he's certainly not a liability at the back. For me, Leif Davis, he's got to be my left back and he is my left back in this team of the season. So my first centre-back, I've gone with Ricardo Santos of Bolton Wanderers. The bottom line is, when Santos plays, Bolton looked like a different side completely at the back. He's strong, powerful, calm on the ball, the perfect centre-back attributes to have. He's helped Bolton keep 11 clean sheets this season and second least number of goals conceded across any other club in the division. He's just ahead of Cashin of Derby for me. It's very, very tight, but the three goals in two 5-0 wins earlier on in the season has just put him ahead of the Derby County centre-half. I've gone with Ricardo Santos of Bolton as my first centre-back in this team of the season. So my second centre-back have gone with Anderson of Barnsley, a mix between a more traditional, no-nonsense central defender and the modern-day player in that position. He's strong, bullish, he's won 75% of his aerial duels this season. He's helped keep 17 clean sheets this season, averaging 4.6 clearances per 90. He's always a threat from set pieces with his 6 foot 3 height, I wish, and he scored twice this season as well. Anderson, the Barnsley captain for me, is a no-brainer. He's got to be in this team of the season. At uh, right back, it was tricky. Lots of candidates, but I've gone with Barry Mumba of Plymouth. Six goals and seven assists in League One, playing as a left wing back and right wing back. He's versatile and getting some fantastic numbers in either position that he plays. The importance of those goals is worth a mention. Two equalisers in two separate games against Ipswich Town. That has to be noted. His constant energy and work rate has been fantastic and integral in the way that Steven Schumacher wants his side to play. I've gone with Barry Mumba over the likes of Conor Bradley, but just at right back in this team of the season. My first central midfielder, I've gone with Barry Bannon, of course, the Sheffield Wednesday captain. This is an example of a non-negotiable. He's just got to be in my team. In my opinion, he is one of the most technical players in this league. He's a mastermind in the central areas of the field. 20 goal contributions, including 13 assists. He's just remarkable when we look at creative numbers. A moment of magic type of player who just, when they need someone to deliver, he will deliver. And they might need to, as they now do head into a playoff campaign. Barry Bannon, he's got to be my team of the season. And he is in central midfield. So next to Barry Bannon, I've gone with Sam Morsey of Ipswich. I think only Tractor Boys fans will fully understand how good and how important Sam Morsey is. He is simply clockwork in a Kieran McKenna side and a machine. That's the only way I can describe it. As well as being a workaholic with incredible distance covered numbers, he has nine goal contributions across the campaign as well. He's the perfect ball winning midfielder who is essential in allowing the attacking players in this Ipswich Town side to thrive. Chaplin, Broadhead, Hurst, Burns, they're all very, very reliant on the likes of Sam Morsi. So in the number 10 position, or as a shadow striker, I've gone with David McGoldrick of Derby County. I think somebody with three hat-tricks, two braces and 22 goals in Skybet League 1 this season has to be in my team of the season. 
His complete forward play has been brilliant with five assists and 11 big chances created. It's easy to say with strikers with a lot of goals, but I think Derby would be nowhere near where they are now without the influence of David McGoldrick. His contribution has been priceless. At 35, his willingness to press, drop deep, collect the ball, link up play has just been essential. I think David McGoldrick has to be in my team of the season. On the left-hand side, I've gone with Aaron Collins of Bristol Rovers. I can't fully get behind the idea of him being the EFL player of the season. However, he certainly does get in my team. He's had some season. 16 goals and 11 assists is not something to be messed with and his influence on Bristol Rovers this campaign has been extraordinary. 17 big chances created also shows the player that he is certainly not selfish and full of creativity. Maybe a slight drop off since the turn of the year, but his numbers last year were mind blowing and a big reason why Bristol Rovers were safe so early on. I think Aaron Collins, yeah, maybe not my player of the year, but it's got to be in my team of the season. So on the right hand side, it was a no brainer. Connor Chaplin is in my team. Another non-negotiable. He was the first name on my team sheet. 26 goals and five assists from an attacking midfielder is just simply sensational. Talk about stepping up at the business end of the campaign. Chaplin has 10 goals in the last 10 games. He's the league top goal scorer and not even an out and out striker. Under Kieran McKenna, he's developed enormously, got better and better, and now is looking to be a goal-scoring and creative genius. I think he's going to thrive in the championship as well, now that promotion has been secured. And I'm happy to say it, Connor Chaplin, he's just got to be my player of the season. And leading the line, I've gone with Johnson Clark-Harris of Peterborough United. Another fantastic goal-scoring season for Johnson Clark-Harris. 25 goals this season. His physical, back-to-goal, lethal finishing ability causes nightmares for defenders once again in Skybet League One. One chance, one moment, Johnson Clark-Harris is the man to finish the dinner. Again, he's Peterborough's guy. He could still guide Peterborough back into the championship if they secure a playoff spot on the final weekend of the season. And then, who knows? We'll talk about big game players. Clark Harris is that man. So that is my League One team of the season for the 2022-23 campaign. In goal, James Trafford at left-back, Leif Davis, Ricardo Santos and Anderson, the two central defenders, with Bally Mumba at right-back. The two central midfielders, Barry Bannon, Sam Morsey, with McGoldrick as a number 10. The front three, Aaron Collins, Johnson Clark Harris and Connor Chaplin on the right-hand side. Let me know your team of the seasons in the comment section down below. I'll be replying and responding to all of those as per usual. Remember, this is just an opinion, but this is my my team of the season, lots to talk about, lots to discuss and lots of very open positions. Last week I also did a video with Tom from 4 written all over it, breaking down his team of the season. You can watch that video on this very channel now. Until next time, I've been Jack. This has been the Jack Wood Football Podcast. Until next time, I will see you all very, very soon. Take care.